Hey everybody, this is Jen with Garden Jen's Journey. Gonna take a little bit of a walk uh, out in my garden and I'm gonna show you uh, what the fall uh, garden looks like. We have lots of plants that are starting to die back um, because they're done producing. Uh, it's time to harvest almost everything in the garden. There's still some things that aren't ready to be harvested yet. So I thought I'd show you what the garden looks like uh, as far as the fall, what we're doing with some of our plants, and also some of the beneficial weeds that we have growing in our garden, um, just so you guys can see what they look like ahead of time. And if you are into medicinal healing, natural remedies, and things like that, you kind of know what to look for. So our first bed here, this is my celebration squash. It's really starting to die back. So um, we're just le letting them hang out here. They're, they're good hanging here. And then, uh, you know, when they're finally completely cured and dried, uh, we'll take them inside. This here, you'll, uh, find, you'll find it all over my yard. Um, this is broadleaf plantain. Let's see if I can zoom in. Broadleaf plantain. It is known as the Band-Aid plant. It's very good first aid for minor cuts and abrasions. It's also good for um, other medicinal purposes. You can Google or Bing it and see what uh, it's all about. This is my glass gem corn. It's a dried corn variety and it's not quite ready uh, for harvesting yet. It's a little bit longer than my atomic orange or atomic red or it's an atomic something or other. Um, it was a very beautiful corn, um, but this one's not quite ready yet to be harvested. It's still filling the, the ears with the kernels, so yeah, we're not quite ready yet. So this here, this massive thing here, this is lamb's quarter, and you've probably seen it in your yard. You'll usually see it like right here. See this small plant here? This is lamb's quarter, a young lamb's quarter. And these leaves here, you can actually eat raw or use them like a spinach. But if you leave them, they grow into this massive, massive, massive bush. And we just left them. Um, they're not bothering anything right now. Um, they're a good area for the birds to, to kind of hide and things like that, or the cats. Um, so we've just left them be. <coughs> And then we have milkweed. We have lots of milkweed in the garden. And as long as it's not interfering with uh, my vegetables or whatever, I love, let them be. Milkweed is very important to our ecosystem here in Michigan. We have monarch butterflies that, that migrate here from here down all the way to South America. And anyways, the milkweed is the only plant really that a monarch butterfly eats and also uh, lays its eggs on, and that's the most important part, that lays its eggs on and its uh, offspring um, eat the leaves and uh, grow into the larger caterpillars that finally go into a cocoon state on this plant and eventually become new monarch butterflies. So this plant is very important for the monarch butterfly. Without it, they won't survive. So we, we don't have a problem letting these plants grow in our garden. Again, as long as they're not competing with other plants uh, directly for nutrients. This is a narrow leaf plantain. It's just like the broad leaf, except it looks a little different. It's a narrow leaf. This actually has a higher concentration of that uh, beneficial chemical compound, but both are very good plants to have. All right, and over here, this is dock, known as curly dock. You can see the curly leaves. Yellow dock, um, sorrel, I think is another name for it. I'm not quite sure. But anyways, the young leaves, the little, the little brand new shoots, these guys you can eat raw. The older leaves, these guys here, you can saute at like spinach. The really old leaves, I don't know if you'd really want to eat them. They'd be kind of bitter. Um, and then the root, of course, can be used for medicinal purposes. So this plant is considered a weed. I mean, you'll see it in your garden or whatever, and a lot of people kill it off, you know, because they don't want weeds in their garden. But it's actually be very beneficial for you. All right. So we can see what else the garden's looking like. A lot of the plants are starting to die back. Um, my 
bee balm's losing its flowers finally. It's done doing flowers, and then my my um, galardius starting to lose its petals and go to the seed heads. Pink ponderosa, my tomatoes here. They didn't do good for me here. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about them, and you can see the nice size they get. They're huge, but um, generally I have a problem with bugs with them rotting before we can even harvest them. So in my area, the pink ponderosas did not do well. So I'm not going to grow them myself next year, but I'm saving the seeds to spread them to other people who might have more of a benefit. And then we got um, all my lemon balms here and my calendula, my valerian. Uh, my valerian when it grows in the spring, it gets as tall as this building here. This is an old garage, and uh, it gets really, really big. And then once the big shoots die back, it starts again, and it's kind of a small plant. And then I have, this is brand new to my herb bed this year. This is lemon mint, so it's really pretty. I'm going to be trying to save some seeds from that so I can pass it along. So, and then uh, we have pink hyssop really pretty some chives and some white whorehound i'm really really excited about the white whorehound because last year it did not do very well it was very sickly looking and it just not did not grow this year it's been really producing really well i've taken quite a few cuttings from it already and it's still really a vibrant plant so i'll be able to take some more cuttings before it dies back for the winter so excited about that my purple cone flower it's starting to die back I've already harvested quite a few of these cone heads for the seeds. But it's still a really pretty plant for this time of year. And then the blue hyssop's going to seed. You see my chickens. Normally, uh, my chickens are kept out of my garden because they destroy my garden. I mean, doing what chickens do with all their pecking and, and scratching and things, they uproot plants really easily. But because my garden is dying back, um, we've harvested quite a few things already. And what hasn't been harvested, um, it, it's very um, well established. We let the girls in so they can start um, tilling and, and making the ground good for next year. And they also get to eat some of the rotten produce and leftover things. <clears throat> so, like this kale here. This kale has not been eaten by cabbage worms. It's been eaten by my chickens. So, um, and that's fine, you know, we, we let them in here so they can enjoy these sorts of things. They're actually doing me a favor. <clears throat> and I said most of my potato, or tomatoes have, um, we've harvested most of them. You can still see we've got quite a few, but they're rotting. So the chickens come in, they'll till this, and they, they actually are eating the, um, the tomatoes. So it's not going to waste it at all. And then my sunflowers, they're starting to, starting to be the end of the season for them. So I've had some really pretty sunflowers this year. Can you see how pretty that is? Really, really gorgeous. <clears throat> And then my Brussels sprouts are still going strong, hoping to get some sprouts from them. I um, put some bone meal around the roots because they're a beautiful plant, but the sprouts were not growing. And now the sprouts are starting to grow. So, exciting to see how that's going to go. Alright, these are my bumblebees. They're the last of my tomatoes that are still, still producing a little bit. I've still got some um, beautiful tomatoes going on here that are ripening. And then this is Triumphal Voletta. It's a beautiful purple pole bean. And we've let these go to seed so we can harvest them. You can see we're going to have a lot of bean seeds. But next year I plan on growing lots and lots of beans. We're going to have quite a few uh, trellises next year. That's my plan anyway, to grow lots of beans. And then this is Kentucky Wonder. Same thing. We're letting them go to seed so we can... Uh, have lots of beans next year and also we, sh we share seeds and swap seeds with other people so that's why we harvest a bunch of them and the chickens also get to use them too then my pumpkins <clears throat> and this is Cherokee Trail of Tears bean 
and it's really, really pretty. Um, they start out as this purple. It's a variegated, it's like purple, and then you can see the green there. They start out as purple, then they go to green, and then they go to red, and then eventually they, you know, they start dying back and uh, turn that color. So it's been interesting to watch this particular plant. Um, this bean can be eaten as a young, young purple bean when it's tiny. Now this is a seed bean now, but when it's tiny, um, you can eat them young, like you would a regular snap bean, or you let them dry and they are used as a dried bean. So that's what we're doing with these guys is we're, we're drying quite a few of them. So we have dried, an additional dried variety this year. And then I have some more beans planted down here. I don't think we're gonna get anything before our frost, which is in a month from now. But anyways, uh, planted some more beans there. <clears throat> and this is another plantain. Uh, this is the broadleaf. And you can see my chickens have been just destroying it, which is fine. Um, this is one of the most beneficial plants that a chicken can eat. And then you'll see in my garden, a thing that is definitely a weed. We've never had it in our garden before, but this year has been like the worst. And it's crabgrass. You can see it here. And my husband showed me the easiest way to tell crabgrass. It's because it looks like a crab. It, um, when it grows, it's very spiny and spindly. So you can see the crabgrass growing right with the plantain. It just, you know, it's a crab. And so we have lots of crabgrass to yank out of here when we start yanking out all these plants. So that's been the only weed that we've really dealt with that is definitely a weed is crabgrass. You see a more curly dock. I think this is red sorrel because you see the red. Really, really beautiful. And these are my mustard greens that we let go to seed. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the texture of the mustard seed leaves when they, they start to grow. They unfurl eventually, but um, they're really a beautiful, beautiful plant. So, and then this is another weed. Definitely a weed that people do not want in their yards, let alone their garden. This is a thistle, and it's uh, a milk thistle. And you can definitely see um, the colors here. This is a beautiful, beautiful, oops, sorry, um, colored plant. And it's, uh, the, the butterflies like it, the bees like it. We just don't like it as humans because it's it's very prickly. It hurts, and you can see the seed heads go everywhere, just like uh, dandelions. But this is a very very beneficial plant to have for the environment. And then the the seed heads, if you harvest them before they you know blow all over the place, you can actually let's see if I can grab some here. Oops, I didn't get any. So. Um, Try again. Oh, doesn't look like I'll be able to get any. But if you um, harvest the seed seeds before they fly everywhere, um, this, the milk thistle seeds are. Yep, yeah, and there's none in here. They're very, very, very beneficial um, for um, medicinal purposes. Oh, here's some seeds right here. You can barely see it hanging on there, right there. Oh, I just knocked it off. But anyways, milk thistle is, is a very good plant to have. There's some seeds. Let's see, can you see those seeds in there? Um, it's a very beneficial plant for health purposes. And because this is not in the walkway or where I actually would bump it, I've just left it alone because like I said, it's good for the environment. And then here's another plant. Some people like it, some people don't. Hi, Latte. This is a known as um, Oh, lamb's ear. Sorry, I had to think for a minute. This is lamb's ear, and it's a very good plant to have, too. But um, if you don't want it in your garden, you know, people tend to yank it out because it is considered a weed. But it's got some good medicinal qualities, too. Which reminds me of another weed that I'd like to show you that actually grew on purpose in my garden. This is a latte. She's the mother of all these little kittens you see running around. Uh, she's a beggar for attention at the moment. She's pregnant again, and she's just having pregnant mood swings. <laughs> so, but anyways, more sorrel. See all the sorrel growing here. The, and then the 
the dandelion leaves growing there. But anyways, this is the other plant that is considered a weed. This is mullen. And mullen's very good for bronchial and respiratory Ill illnesses. And again, you can use Google or Bing and, and do your own research on this, this plant. But I use it a lot. My son has asthma. He gets bronchitis real easy. And so we, we use this plant a lot. So I actually grew it on purpose in my garden. I have this one. And I have a couple others in here somewhere. They have died back a little bit. But again, it's it's finding out what what weeds are actually useful and what weeds are actually weeds. So um, I'm just so thankful for the Lord giving me that information. And over here, these are the seeds of the sorrel plant, the curly dock. And these two have very beneficial properties. So later on, the weather's not right right now, but later on I'm actually going to come out and I'll harvest these seeds and I'll store them for later. So, hi mama. <laughs> and then her daughter. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what the garden's looking like right now. It doesn't look all glorious and beautiful because everything's starting to die. But um, it is doing pretty good. Looks like I still have a couple of karabi left. I didn't know if I did or not. This is karabi. And it's uh, small compared to what it's supposed to be. But it's still going to be quite delicious when I cut it up and, and cook it later on today. So, anyways, this is my garden. This is what it looks like right now. Um, hopefully you've gotten some ideas over the year of watching what my garden's doing to implement and grow your own garden next year. Um, or expand your garden if you've never grown things uh, quite like I have or have a new appreciation for the various weeds that you find in your garden um, but anyways that is that is my hope that this journey will show you guys what I've been learning and putting into practice as far as my gardening uh, skills and medicinal things and you know just just the journey it's been taking um, to to learn all this information and apply it so I just thank you so much for watching and following me on my journey and I hope your day is blessed all right everybody bye bye